Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's my warriors? Anybody fired up out there for Jesus? Come on. Let me hear you. Shout. The kids are on fire. Are you on fire out there? There you are. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What an exciting day. The Lord has given us today. He woke us up. Thank you, Jesus. In our right minds, with all our faculties and in perfect health, we got another beautiful day to live for him. We have another day to see his mighty and miraculous hand move in our lives, our circumstances, and our situations. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to the state capitol shortly, but I promised I'd be here and we would allow the Lord to speak through us into your heart, and that's exactly what we're going to do, but boy, are we fired up. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning thanking God, praying to God that he would move and just bring himself to glory and heal everybody, and that's exactly what we expect to happen if you're in the Sacramento area. Come to the state capitol. Between 12 and 6, we'll be ministering there, glorifying God, singing songs, praying for the sick. Amen. Praying for salvation. Join us in that, knowing that we're out there. We're going to try to get as much film up on the Facebook as we can during the event. Bert and the commission will be out there today. Amen. They have another event where they're working with the police department, handing out backpacks to kids. Amen. School supplies to go back to school with. And so immediately following that function, they're going to race on over and join us. So Hedalita is going to be there. She's our praise leader and she's going to be singing praises. I'm going to get up there and try to sing background with her and just praise the Lord today because God is good and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Amen. And my, in my heart, this nation, come on, Tim. I said this nation, one nation under God. Amen. Where are we? <laughs> where, are, where are we with that? Amen. In that declaration Amen. of independence. Where are we? With that, I know where I am. Amen. And I know what the Lord instituted by our forefathers for this mighty nation of his. Amen. But Amen. it's starting to get difficult to see with all that's going on. So we just thank God for the opportunity to come out and let it be seen through his children. Amen. Through his servants. And, uh, Oh, we, I don't even know what to say. It's just so exciting. And the podcast today, oh, the Lord gave me revelation on this book of Revelation. Can't wait to get to the Word. But uh, let's get to our shout-outs and this powerful, powerful prayer list. See, healing's already coming out all over this world into each one of our lives. Miracles that we so desperately need. PTSD, gone. Depression, gone. Uh, cancer, gone. All types of ailments that God's people are afflicted with. This power is here. Thank you, Jesus. And he wants us healed. He wants us delivered. He wants us set free and living for him. And in that freedom of him, to live for him. How are you going to be free when you're drunk like Bubba? <laughs> Bubba came in about two hours ago. He is passed out. And for what? I thank God because that means he won't be going to the Capitol steps and making a mess over there. He going to be, oh, yeah, he going to be out the rest of the day. He, he tied one on last night. <laughs> but we pray for him, and we want his soul to be saved just like we want everybody. And it doesn't matter where you're at. And every family got a bubble. Ain't that right, Tim? <laughs> you there, Tim? Tim's with us today. How about an applause for Pastor Tim? <laughs> Amen. 
He's going to hold. Amen, Rev. Everybody does have a Bubba in their family. I know. Yeah. I've had a few. You had a few of Bubba's, huh? And they oh, come in yeah. female form, too. Don't think that there can't be a female Bubba. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They have haunted us all our lives. But let's just let's just do something real quick. Let's just give a shout out for the Lord Jesus and all he's doing, all that he's done, and everything he plans on doing in our lives. Amen. Put your hands together and just say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. A shout out to all of you that are following on YouTube and Facebook. We are here for all of you, and we love each and every one of you. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me personally, maybe some prayer, or perhaps uh, you just want to chat something out, amen, I'm here for you. Find me on Facebook. Search Rev Eddie Wiggins, amen? Search Rev Eddie Wiggins, and Rev Eddie is one word on Facebook. No space, no dash, no dots, no periods. Just Rev Eddie Wiggins and message me. We'll exchange numbers, amen, and we can talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while in our hearts that Almighty God is going to work it out, amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. A shout out to our favorite island over there in uh, the Philippines, the island of Mindanao. And our favorite radio station and favorite DJ in the whole wide world, Joe Ryan on the Mighty Mix FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. Keep Joe lifted up in your prayers. He's got a couple of projects, a couple of plans that he's working on, and he needs God's mighty hand of favor as well as God's uh, blessings. Amen. So keep Joe lifted up in your prayers along with Woody Boy, a.k.a. Dr. Love, on the Healing Hour, on the Mighty Mix FM 90.1, on your FM radio dial. We thank God for the both of you having a heart for God's people, having a heart for this word, having a heart for serving God's people in any way that you can. We thank God for you, Joe Ryan and Woody Boy, and we thank God that you put up with us, <laughs> amen, and you're turning this podcast into a broadcast and lighting it up with heaven's fire and sending it out through the air on fire, <laughs> okay, into the ears and hearts and souls and minds and uh, spirits of all the beautiful people in Dipalog City and Polanco and Dapaton City and Barangay District 1, 2, and 3. Thank you, guys. And we love all of you over there in the Philippines. Don't think we don't. And when God makes a way, we're on the first thing smoking, coming over to spend some time with you and be a blessing to you. Amen. Keep Pastor Nelia up in your prayers. Amen. Over there in Dipalog City and all the way up into the mountains doing a thing for Christ Jesus, amen, and for the kingdom of God. I'm in beating back that bush and going to villages and looking for the lost and preaching this true gospel of Jesus Christ. What a warrior. Thank you, Jesus, for Pastor Nelia. Amen. A shout out to Dale and Charlotte over there in the beautiful downtown Australia, amen, on fire for the Lord sharing God's word with everybody that will listen. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. To my knowledge, Murray's still here. <laughs> Unless something happened this morning. She didn't tell me, and she reached out this morning. Murray's still hanging in there. Amen. And we thank God for Murray. He's about to transition into heaven's gates with no fear. No fear, Murray. Everything's all right. With no fear, it's the knowing where you're going, and that family is embracing Murray with hugs and kisses as he transitions from this earth into his heavenly reward. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Keep uh, 
Samaga over in Zambia, Africa, lifted up in your prayers, along with that Bible study that God has put on her heart. And we're praying, Samanga, that the Lord would send people hungry for his word. Amen. This life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word of God. And that they would be seeking God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as you pour through this living word. Amen. Keep Minister Deborah Atwell down in Trinidad lifted up on in your prayers. Kaye to Jesus is how you follow her on Facebook. Very powerful ministry, and she is on fire looking for the lost, trying to save every soul on that island. You go, girl. Amen. Kaye to Jesus, C-A-Y-A, to Jesus. Come as you are to Jesus. Isn't that nice? Amen. Keep our Anna, our precious, precious prophetess, prayer warrior, I mean, I don't know where this ministry would be without her. Every ministry on planet Earth need a Anna, but we got this one, and we don't want to let her go. Y'all can't have her. <laughs> Amen. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Amen. As she is praying for each and every one of you, keep her son Jacob lifted up in your prayers. Amen. That he would come closer and closer and closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, surrendering all to Jesus, amen, and become that mighty warrior that God created him to be. Keep Maddie lifted up in your prayers, along with Chris and Micah down there in Australia. Nick and Patricia, thank God for them, and they'll be back in two days, amen. Monday, we get a third podcast interview with them. And just trying to find out all the beautiful things that God has shared with them in their marriage, in their ministry, that powerful prison ministry. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Along with Pastor Mike down there at the Victory Outreach uh, in Fort Worth, Texas. And that's a famous Victory Outreach. He's doing a thing. Everybody know about that ministry. Amen. And we want a second interview with him and his wife. She's a powerhouse. Oh, I tell you, Pastor Mike is blessed. He's got a deliverance ministry and a heart to serve God's people. But what you do for the least of mine, you do for me. Our Lord Jesus said, keep Pastor Mike and his ministry lifted up in your prayers along with Pastor Joel. I saw his post early this morning. He's on his way to a men's prison with his wife. Amen. And we thank God for their ministry and can't wait to get them in the podcast. Keep Coach Decker and his darling wife Kay and all his family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in your prayers, along with Donna and her two sons, Harvey Carey and his wife Rosie, Anthony and Jamal on the beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia, as they're ministering this true gospel of Jesus Christ. Be with Elena Vas uh, uh, pray for Elena Vasquez. She's home, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep her, her health, her husband, Pablo, her son, Nellie, and we're praying for a complete deliverance and healing in Nellie's body, heart, mind, and soul. Amen. Uh, and all her family, keep all of her family lifted up. In your prayers, amen. Pray for Rod and Grandma Naomi. God bless you, Grandma. Thank God for you, girl. Amen. Keep my sisters Karen and Jan and my Auntie Annette lifted up in your prayers, along with Sarah and Captain Haynes and their ministries, amen. Minister Prophetess Mary Jo Mosley and her grandsons Cameron and Jason, Dorothy and her dad and her son Lee. Pastor Jody and her powerful ministry. Amen. Gail and Tex. Oh, I can't wait to get in their arms. We'll see them in just a little bit. They're coming out to the Capitol steps with us, and they're going to praise God and just do as the Lord leads them. What a blessing they are to any, mini any ministry. They're the heartbeat <laughs> of this ministry. You, you you ain't been loved till you fell into their arms. We thank God for Gail and Tex. Amen. Amen. Keith 
and Cheyenne and Helena Gore lifted up in your prayers, along with Jay Clark. Beat your kids. Uh-huh. Caught you working that cereal this morning. Uh-huh. Keep Jay Clark lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And he's trying to stand in for Elena. Elena had to uh, uh, disappear for a minute, you know, going to the hospital. She's back home. Thank God. Amen. And so if you haven't seen her comments, she usually takes every word Tim and I say and finds the scriptures for what we're speaking. And I asked Jay to uh, uh, intervene in her absence. Amen. And he did a good job. Tim, he got an A. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And so keep Ladera and her entire family lifted up in your prayers and pray hard for her grandchild. We're praying for a miracle in their family and for her grandchild. And keep Evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry lifted up in your prayers and her daughter. A miracle for her daughter in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. And Lucia and Sasha. Amen. And we thank God for both of you, Lucia and Sasha. We thank you for continuing to follow. Follow. We see the work that God is doing in your lives as you're coming into the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his word. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It only gets better. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep April and her children lifted up in your prayers. And her children are Bradley and Emma and Kyle and Gracie, her husband John, and her prayers that they would all come full force to Jesus. Everybody get saved. Amen. And pray for her Nana Sandy, healed from cancer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And keep on. Uh, yeah. Kids are on it. See him, Tim. Keep Donna Love lifted up in your prayers. Her prayer is to have the Lord find her family a new home and for her entire family to be saved in the mighty name of Jesus, done, done in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for Jerry and Nikki and Antonio. Amen. Jesse down in Florida and his entire family and situations. Amen. Keep our warrior, Lene, lifted up in your prayers. Nikki, another Nikki, keep her lifted up in your prayers. She's down under. Amen. Keep Adrena lifted up in your prayers. Total healing in her body. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And what a blessing she is. Boy, that that, that that woman of God is a door opener, a window opener. I mean, she's got us in a lot of places we couldn't get to. We thank God for Adrena. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Keep Grant lifted up in your prayers. My boy Brian lifted up in your prayers. DM Faith, salvation for her entire family done in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep Bert's ministry up in your prayers. Amen. And the commission will be out. We're going to see him today on the Capitol steps. They'll be a little late, but we're going to be there for six hours. Amen. So he'll be right on time. Keep him and his wife and daughter and all the commission lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Keep Laura Lie lifted up in your prayers and her baby sister, Sasha. Very important that we keep Sasha Lifted up in our prayers. Pray for Dominique Moore and Billy Moore. E.S. from YouTube. Amen. Pray for Patty and her husband Hartman. Uh, they are a pastoral, been pastoring many, many years. Pastoral married couple. And she was diagnosed with cancer. Cancer gone right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And pray for Rebecca Bishop and Jim Bishop. Jim Bishop, as you remember, Tim, is our trucker who was uh, badly injured Amen. when that truck was blown over and came apart and on him, crushed him. And we just keep him lifted up in our prayers, total healing, complete healing, like it never happened kind of healing in the mighty name of Jesus and his finance. We need to pray for his finances. He ain't driving. He ain't making no money. We just pray that the Lord would keep 
their finances, a miracle in their finances as they go through this and he gets back on that road. Amen. We thank God for Scott Woodall. He got to witness the mighty hand of God working over there in Alaska with his sister. Praise Jesus. He got to see it unfold right in front of his face. Your prayers, our prayers being answered. And he got to witness it. I believe Scott has gotten experience now on this battlefield, casting out demons, praying for folks that are demon-possessed. That's all that is when they're attacked in their mind. You see, the doctors say, yeah, you got PTSD, you got uh, depression, you got anxiety, you got multiple personality disorder, you got this, that, and the other. That's just demonic possession. Christ promised us a Christ-like mind. (laughs) Amen? And he'll do it. And I've seen those healings. Scott got to witness that. Praise God. And just keep Scott Woodall, his wife, and his sister lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Because he is certainly thankful. And he sent that message over there on YouTube. Go see it for yourself. He's thanking us for our prayers. Amen. Pray for Veronica and her family and her situation. She needs a miracle. Becca. Amen. And her family and relatives and loved ones and her situation. She needs a miracle. Michelle Bowman, she needs a miracle from God right now for her circumstances and her family. Pray for Precious and Eric, our Thunder Twins. We thank God for our Thunder Twins. Amen. And we just pray right now. Join us in this prayer. Complete and total healing in every area of their bodies, whole and complete, from their toes to the top of their head, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And total deliverance in every area of their lives, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Pray for Pastor Tim. He's going to grab the reins when I head out, heading to the state capitol. So he'll be here. You got a prayer request? Hit him up with Tim Heather on Facebook or hit him up on my page. He's monitoring. He'll be holding the reins while we run out to glorify God and pray for healing for these people, God's precious people, everyone he brings and draws there and healing for this nation. Amen. Uh, Keep his wife Heather lifted up in your prayers along with Tim's daughters, Jaden and Haley. Pray hard for Haley. Amen. Pray for Christina with a K down there in beautiful downtown Mississippi. Amen. Christ in her heart and Christ in her name. Pray for her lovely son, Bo, and her grandmother and all her family, relatives, and loved ones. And everything that is dear to her that's God, that God has put on her heart to do. Amen. Pray for Giovanni and Sophia needs our prayers. A miracle, a miracle, a miracle of healing right now and we know the only miracle worker there is we know jesus let's just ask that the the lord jesus would touch sophia right now and give her that miracle she needs in her body in jesus name amen keep paul and maddie's mom tina and nancy bullock and stephanie deffer lifted up in your prayers along with mateo that is tex and gail's grandson Keep Mateo lifted up in your prayers. He needs a miracle in his life right now. Several, several miracles in his life right now. And we're praying for total restoration and healing in his body, mind, heart, and spirit. And his situation needs a miraculous turnaround in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for Zara and her husband Ali and their children, Iran and Baran and Julie down under and Margaret down under. Welcome, Julie. She's friends now. She's following the podcast. We thank God for Julie and all that God is doing in your life, Julie. Uh, keep Tyler lifted up in your prayers down under. Uh, Wang Wien from uh, Melbourne, Australia. She's down under. Uh, Marie and David Rivers and Whitney and Sherry a married Christian ministry couple and their daughter 
pray hard for their family. Amen. Angelica Lewis down under. Zarlia down under. A little seven-month-old baby. We're praying for complete healing and restoration in that baby's body. You can see her uh, TV. They had her on TV. Uh, it's on my page. Just scroll down to it. And it's on NFL on uh, uh, Facebook. It's on Anna's page as well. Amen. And we have been praying for her for months. And keep her brother and mom and dad and all her family, relatives and loved ones, and friends. She's got a whole lot of new friends. Amen. That have been praying for her. Keep them all lifted up in your prayers. Along with Laura from YouTube and her daughter Micah. Pray hard for Micah. Coming out better than she went in in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep Jean, who felt God's healing touch in her body, keep her lifted up in your prayers, along with Christine Starr and Robert Minnick and Ken, who lost his daughter, 24 years old, just a couple of months ago. Keep Ken lifted up in your prayers that God's will be done in Ken's life in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep Ryan lifted up in your prayers along with Ikina down in Houston, Texas, lifted up in your prayers. Apostle Stephen from Nairobi, Kenya, and his ministry. Amen. Along with Chester and Carly and Martin and Paris and Julie and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. <laughs> Keep them all lifted up in your prayers. Who out there is ready for a powerful, powerful, powerful word? And Revelation today, uh, out of the book of Revelation, who ready for their word? Hey, praise God, praise God, praise God. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 7. Now, we read 1 through 7 yesterday, realizing that there's 144,000. It's symbolic. It's a symbolic number, which includes all who believe in Christ. All throughout history who have had faith in God from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Amen? Everybody. And he's not going to forget one. God is perfect. Not one of us will be left out. And what Scott Woodall was talking about, Tim, yesterday, okay? Now, we're on fire for the Lord. A lot of people out here on this podcast, they're on fire for the Lord. So we were talking about that seal that God puts upon his people. Would we need a seal? We are already on our way to heaven. You see what I'm saying? We're saved and saved and uh, uh, Holy Ghost filled. But yes, we're going to get that seal because it's not for us. It's for all these judgments that are coming down. It's like putting the blood of the Lamb during Passover in the Old Testament on your doorpost and above your door. Mm -hmm. So when the Passover right. angel comes by, he passes over your house, but only kills the firstborn in the homes that don't have the blood. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God already knows who his children are. But that seal, as we're going to see, I don't want to jump ahead. See, that's where Scott went. See, I want to do this like a storybook. It's an adventure. It's a movie unfolding. And so we go step by step. Some of y'all racehorses out there, racehorses in the Word of God, and you want to, you, you want that answer now, but it's going to unfold. You see, those locusts that come out of that pit of hell that had that sting that we're going to read about, they don't bother the people with God's seal on them. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. The Holy Spirit in us is our guarantee that we are on our way to heaven, the Bible says. Amen. Mm -hmm. However, Amen. we got a seal on our forehead. I don't know if y'all ever watched Stargate. <laughs> Amen. I I'm trying to remember the brother's name, that warrior, and he had that little thing on his forehead. Oh, tilt. Tilt. Yeah. Love me some tilt. He was Mark. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so... Yeah, we're going to be marked. We're going to be sealed. Guaranteed. In other words, 
These boys are getting on the train. These girls are getting on the train. These are my children. Amen. But they're still down here during the tribulation. Make sure you leave my kids alone. Don't come near them. If they're on that side of the street, you stay over there. <laughs> Amen. So we are still here. Think about it. Go back through the podcast. We've gone through the first uh, seven chapters in Revelation. Ain't nobody left yet. We ain't heard no shout. We haven't heard that last trumpet. We haven't even got to the trumpet ju judgments. But there's going to be a last trumpet. We haven't seen him coming in glory. I say coming in glory on the clouds with millions of angels on white horses and swords and all suited up and booted up ready to make war. We haven't seen that. Have we? And that's when he returns for his bride. Amen? So, uh, we're going to start today at verse 9. Revelation chapter 8. Amen? And we'll Amen. be using a lot of study guide on this. I want you to capture this. Where are we in what Jesus is revealing to John for us. Well, as we've already covered, first Jesus started out with the letters, the love letters to his bride, the churches. Some of them spotless, without blemish, doing a thing for the Lord. Some of y'all need to pull it back together. You're in a very dangerous place with me, and you don't meet up to my father's standards. Stop that. Go back to doing that, and you'll make it through these last days. So first, the love letters, right? <laughs> and then he's telling John, come up here. I got something to give you. And he's showing him heaven, showing him the throne room, showing him the four living creatures, showing him the elders, showing him what it looks like. This is what glory looks like, John. Amen. Then he breaks loose with the seals the seal judgments. And we're just about going into that seventh seal in chapter eight. Probably get there tomorrow. Okay? So, in the interim of the seals and the judgments that are being poured out, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and, uh, you know, this great earthquake, that sixth seal wasn't no joke. Amen? But now, let me show you something, John, because you're seeing judgment come upon the earth. You've seen a quarter of the people die, but I want you to see something else. I want you to give my people that are still down there hope. Let me show you. First of all, let me reveal the songs that they'll be singing. Let me show you those under the altar who have died for their testimony about me. Let me show you a multitude that you won't be able to count and what that heavenly reward looks like so they won't lose hope. As these other judgments that are about to come, they're even worse. You thought these first, <laughs> you thought these first seven were bad. Oh, I got some eagles that are going to cry out to the world, whoa, whoa, whoa. Terror, 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 depending on what translation you're reading out. Oh, it's about to get rough down there. But you keep this vision in your eyes. Because I got a place prepared for them. There'll be no more death, no more sickness, no more crying there, no more sorrow, no more pain. You're going to be with me. <laughs> so take a look at this. And keep your eyes fixed on this as I unfold this judgment, these judgments on this wicked world in hopes that there will be repentance of those that are serving Satan, those that will repent of their sins. My children are down there working hard trying to get these last souls of this great harvest off that earth. But, what God is doing, he's doing a partial judgment, still giving people time to repent. But focus your eyes on this. 
okay? Because as we go through this tribulation, don't forget this scene that he shows John to tell us about, of how it will be, how wonderful it's going to be. Verse 9, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen? After this, I saw a vast crowd. After what? After what is John talking about? Well, it was revealed to him, the 144,000. Amen? And uh, uh, the mark, the people uh, here being sealed. Amen? And so, in other words, what God is revealing to John, has revealed to John, is the preservation of God's people, his sold out warriors. Now watch this. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. There's only one name under heaven by which man can be saved. And that name is Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Preach it, brother. You miss Jesus. There is no salvation. (laughs) You can't be saved without coming to Jesus. Amen. Now, I want to go to this study guide on this. This vast crowd. Different interpreters, different religions, different teachers been preached differently over the centuries. Who is the vast crowd? Amen. In my heart, in my mind, it's that 144 symbolic number, that vast crowd. Now, uh, standing before the throne, they're every people. These are not just Jews. Get it out of your head. I know it's being taught that. You have to remember. Amen. Amen. And the New Testament says there is no more Jew or Gentile, just the body of Christ, just the Jesus lovers, just those who had faith in God in the Old Testament before God manifested himself in the flesh through Jesus Christ. You see? Abraham, the father of faith. And we've read about a lot of individual that put their faith in God. But as a nation, they never did. Get that out of your head. Only a remnant. (laughs) Only a remnant are going to make it. They're stubborn. They're disobedient. They're rebellious against God. They denounce Christ. They denounce that the Savior even came, that the Messiah has come. They're still waiting, living under the law of Moses, sacrificing lamb. Where? You don't even have a temple. What altar are you sacrificing on? It's, it's a farce. We are the new Israel. And that's what I wanted you to find, J. Clark, where Paul says that. It's in the New Testament. We are Israel. The new Israel is all those who have put their faith in Christ. And it doesn't go down to what you was born as. It's not a race. It's not a heritage. It's not a religion. It's a heart. <laughs> And he put a heart in all of it. So it doesn't matter if you're black, white, red, yellow, green, blue. It don't matter. Your peoples. Look what he said here. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation. See, they're trying to tie those tribes into this is just for Israel. That's not true. Read the word. What does the word say? That's why we're always pushing it. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. Well, this denounces that. After that, after this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation. That's right, Mindanao. <laughs> and every tribe. That's right, Australia. And people. That's right, Africa. And language. That's right, America, Mexico. Mm-hmm. All our beautiful Asian uh, uh, communities. Everybody's included. 
It's not about the color of your skin or your nationality or who your grandpa was. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Do you see that? Every nation and tribe and people and, and language. Heaven is for anyone and everyone, all of God's creation. Let's stop separating ourselves. The world wants to do that. The world wants to have prejudice get in this. This ain't for you people. This is only for us people. Stay away from them. That's a sick teaching. And that has been taught throughout history. Okay? Ralph, no. Go ahead, Tim. I was going to say, if you think about it, Jesus did say he was coming for the Israelites, the Hebrews. Yeah. But he sent his disciples out into the world for the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. Why? They were getting chased out of the synagogues. They were getting chased. Paul ran for his life. Everywhere he went, he went to a synagogue first, and they would chase him out. He might not. He said, fine. Fine. Amen. I think it was chapter 23. He said, fine. You know what? Uh, Or 24. Uh, If if you're not going to come in and believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, I'll take it to Gentiles, and they will believe. That's how we got it. Their disobedience and their disbelief. They still blessed us. That's what the promise to Abraham was. Through your seed, the whole world will be blessed. Even in their refusal, the world got blessed. Are you with me? To the point that every nation and tribe and people and language, all of us are in. All you got to have is the love of Christ in your heart, and that is your ticket to heaven. Amen? And they were standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. Now that looks like a crowd that belongs there. Are you with me? They're dressed for the occasion. And they've come to worship the Lord. And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. Let's go to study guide on this. Who is this vast crowd? While some interpreters identify it as the martyrs. Okay. Those that were under the altar crying out, Lord, when you going to whoop them down for cutting my head off? They done shed my blood, Lord. You said revenge is yours, that my enemies are your enemies. Well, when you going to get them, Lord? Remember the martyrs under the altar? That happened in the fifth seal, if I remember correctly. Amen? That was that pause. Things are happening on earth, but things are happening in heaven, and one of them seals broke, and the martyrs cried out. Amen? But while some interpreters identify it as the martyrs described in 6-9, it may also be the same group as 144,000. You see, the 144,000 is just a symbolic number representing completeness. All. Oh. All of us. Everybody. And that's where I lean. It's a number that can't be counted. Well, what did it say in verse 9? After I saw, after this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count. See, other religions will tell you there's only 144,000 going to heaven. That is a lie. That would make, (coughs) that would make, Heaven just a little bit be- bigger than a football stadium or a half or two. It's 1,500 miles long. That's from California to Texas long. Deep 1,500 miles from California to Texas deep. All four sides equal. And 1,500 miles high. Well, you need such a big place for a handful of folks. Come on. Get real. But there's room enough for everybody. (laughs) Amen? Know that in your heart. Watch this. The 144,000 were sealed by God before the great time of persecution. The vast crowd was brought to eternal life. As God promised. God cannot break his promise. No matter how rough. No matter the lie. No matter what the press tells you. No matter what the Antichrist tells you. 
no matter what the devil is whispering to you, and deception will be so great in these last days. Watch out. Stay in your word. Read your word. Read your word. Because they are going to lie about this. Amen? And they might tell you heaven's full. And so you might as well join our side and take that mark and worship this statue. We don't know what lies and deception they're going to throw out. But if you know your word, you'll know the truth. Amen. And when that lie comes, you'll know, "Uh uh-uh, I ain't doing that. Amen. Watch this. Uh, Before they were being, being prepared, now they are victorious. So in a way, what John is seeing is the victory of those that held on to their faith. That's what Amen. Jesus is revealing to him. You, you stand for me no matter what. I don't care if they cut your head off or you die of natural causes. You stand for me. Stay with me. Stay close to me. Keep my spirit in your chest, living in you. This is just a glimpse of what it's going to look like. <laughs> Amen? So watch it. Amen. This crowd in heaven is composed of all those who remain faithful to God throughout the generations. No true believer ever need worry about which group or he or she will be in. God includes and protects each of us. You can't get out of his sight. Don't worry. And we are guaranteed a place in his presence. God cannot lie. You can take this to heart. Amen? Now, verse 11 says, And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. You see how John keeps seeing the four living beings? That's why I know they're real. Over and over again, he talks about the four living beings being included in God's throne room. This is not symbolism in my heart. This is a reality that Jesus is revealing to John to share with us. I believe Jesus, and I know John, having ran with Jesus, having a personal relationship with Jesus, and having a sold-out life with Jesus, is not going to mess this up. He's going to tell us. I trust him. He's going to tell us what Jesus revealed to him, exactly the way it was revealed. I don't question God's word. God's too powerful to allow a mistake in his word. People are teaching theological schools, these so-called teachers, and say there's contradictions in God's word. No, there isn't. And the Lord spoke to me on that. He said, my word will never contradict itself. The contradiction isn't in the word. The contradiction The contradiction is in your understanding of my word. That's why you can find so many other scriptures to back up a scripture and its meaning. And that's how you can find out when somebody takes this word and twists it wrong to feed their own agenda, to make you think, yeah, you're supposed to empty your pockets right here and right now, you see. But you'll find other scriptures that argue what he's saying. Because that scripture he brought didn't have nothing to do with an offering or a sacrifice. You see? That's why we need to know our word. Read your word, read your word, read your word. Amen? Amen. So verse 11 uh, continues. It says, And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. Who did? The angels standing around the throne the elders, and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. They sang, verse 12, saying, Hallelujah. So Jesus is revealing to John what it's going to be like when we all go home, what we'll see, what we'll get to witness, the beauty of God's throne room and what goes on in there. You might be thinking, that he's sitting there with a bunch of darts and lightning bolts trying to light people up. He's trying to get them saved, you know? He doesn't have this great pen and paper pad and keeping a list of all Rev. Eddie's sins. He forgot those, threw them into the sea of forgotten, the Bible says. It's as if I never sinned. 
And you know that if they had a shirt that said Notorious Sinner, I would have one in my closet. Because <laughs> I was. They're gone. He's not keeping track. To punish under the blood of Jesus, they're being erased and we're being washed clean. Why do you think they're standing there in white robes, pure and holy? Even though we've made all these mistakes and crimes against God our whole lives, right? We're washed clean, purified, holy. Because our Savior's holy. And we're his. We're now holy. Because he's righteous. Never sin. We're made right by our faith in him. Amen? He got a heck of a laundry up there because he can wash a white, a robe white, wipe away sin with blood, and it comes out white. <laughs> now, that's the best bleach this world's ever seen. Amen? Amen. Come on. Now, uh, uh, let's see. I got one more study guide I want to go to, and then we're going to get into this beautiful song. People try many methods to remove the guilt of sin. Good deeds, electoral, uh, intellectual pursuits, and even casting blame on others. I didn't want to sin. She made me. Uh-huh. Well, how you end up in her? How you end up naked and in her? She made me. Oh, she forced you. That ain't what she said. <laughs> you, so it's easy to blame others. It's easy to blame life. Well, it was because I was watching my daddy beat my mom that I'm living this way. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm pulling a bubble up with this one. You know what Bubba would say because they were there. Can't wait to find out Bubba's story when he gets in his right mind of what he went through that took him to where he's at. You see? But then where he's going to go and cry. Come on, Bubba. Oh, he is pat. Look at him. There's a puddle under his chin. He, his, his cheek is on the table in a puddle as he's drooling. That's just nasty, okay? That's just nasty. I'm glad he got his own table. He ain't nowhere near our kids. Amen. They looking at him, shaking their heads. Don't, <laughs> don't go down that route, kids. See what it looks like? Intellectual uh -huh. pursuit. They're trying to intellectually okay their sins. If I write a report on this kind of lifestyle, even though God hasn't approved this lifestyle, I can write a report that seems so intelligent that it'll justify it, and it's no longer sin. Oh, Rev, you just had to go there. Dude. I'm sorry. You know what? <laughs> Come on. You know what? They they did something like this in the Crusades. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know if people know what the Crusades were, but it was when the Knights of Europe went over to Israel and tried to take over Jerusalem. And the priest absolved them of all their sins. They could do whatever they wanted. They were absolved because it was a holy war. Wow. Well, they were wrong. That was cruel. And yes, that is a stain was. on Christ's church. Yes. Historically, many countries have stains on their history of how they've treated God's people. America included. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing about history and the mistake as people evolve and grow, we can learn from those mistakes and improve. If we're willing, yes, sir. If you're willing. If you'll just come to Christ, this world will show you your mistake. Oh, we treated those people terrible. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We don't want to live like that no more. No, let's, let's treat them wonderfully from here on out. You see? Dictators have taken over countries and made them horrible. And then when they get the opportunity to get them, those tyrants out and have a government, <laughs> will they rule fairly? If you look through the history of government, it's hard to find a good government. I think even if you look in kings, 
the book of kings. What was there, four or five kings that actually ruled the nation of Israel the way God wanted them to, brought the nation back to God? Just a handful of judges. Judges, I'm so proud of Deborah. Amen. Deborah did a thing. You know, she even got on a horse and went to war herself. Talking about women can't run nothing in the church. Shoot, she ran uh, the like nation. Down, Not only like is she the high the priest of Israel, she ran <laughs> the government. Amen. Amen. And one of the few judges to actually bring in Israel back into God's sight. And you know God got excellent vision. He knows the heart. Oh, yeah. And the heart of that nation came back. Now you trying to do things to make your boss happy. I had to live a life with the heavenly handyman, pleasing God. I already know the client's going to be pleased with all work. But will God approve of it? Because if he don't, we got to tear it down and make, do it again. You better get it right. You better be praying and fasting on them job sites. Because we're doing it to please God. Amen. Obviously, you're going to be overwhelmed as the client. <laughs> but we're living to please God. And when have nations as a whole throughout our history? But see, there's one coming when Jesus rules. <laughs> That will be pleasing in God's sight. And we're going to read about that later. Let's not sneak ahead, Elena, Jay, Scott. Uh, what are you laughing at, Tim? You're the first oh. one all up rifling through my <laughs> notes and uh, uh, you know, that's right. books and trying to figure out what he's going to do next. Amen? Amen. People try many methods to remove the guilt of sin, good deeds, intellectual pursuits, and even casting blame on others. The crowd in heaven, however, praises God, saying that salvation comes from him and from the Lamb. Salvation from sin's penalty can only come through Jesus Christ. Have you had the guilt of sin removed in the only possible way? <laughs> sometimes Amen. this study guide the life application study guide bible it'll ask you a question <laughs> Jesus is the only way he is the only forgiver of sins he's the only one that can uh, wipe away our sins and he has done it is doing it still doing it in his blood it's by his blood wow I just looked at the uh ticker we are way over time so we're going to stop here we'll get into the song tomorrow amen and amen. so uh we'll start at verse 12 tomorrow we'll review a little bit and we will have testimonies about uh, about the lord going to the state capitol you want to come with us hand in hand come on out from 12 to 6 p.m <laughs> jesus is leading his army to the state capitol of california We'll be right there on those steps. We'll get as much as we can shared. Uh, we might have to steal from Karina, Karina, and Bert and their ministries film. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but we'll share as much as we can. We'll give you a testimony tomorrow. Let's pray out of here. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your powerful, powerful, powerful work. We pray that you sink it in our heart with like barbed wire that it will stick to our hearts and we can carry it in our hearts for eternity. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray, Father, right now, what a day of healing we're going to have out there on the Capitol steps. Heal thy people, everyone that you drew here to this podcast, no matter what the ailment is in their body, heal them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing going forth, Father, in power into each and every one of their lives. Thank you, Father. Heal thy people, O oh Lord. Some out there need deliverance, Lord. Let that delivering power come forth right now. Break every yoke, break every chair, chain, tear down every stronghold in the mighty name of Jesus. Some are prisoners, Lord, in their minds, hearts, souls, spirits, circumstances. 
Lord, if they move in the circumstance they're in, all they see is further destruction or even worse. <laughs> they're trapped. Oh, Father, you're the only one that can open those doors and set the captives free. Do it, Lord, for your glory. Each and every one of them. Show them that your ways are not our ways. They think they're stuck. They think they're prisoners to their circumstances. Show them the way out, Lord. And your way always works. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some are in very dark place. <laughs> very dark place. Lord Jesus, run up in there in your marvelous light, your glory. Light up that dark place. Grab a hold of them, Lord, and just love on them. Carry them out of that dark place into a new life. Lit up by you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, and we praise you, and we glorify you. We're so excited to go serve you today. Keep us on fire in Jesus' name, all y'all out there. Do us a favor. Have a good day, a wonderful day, a happy day, a loving day, a wonderful day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans.